So one approach would be to take a look at the auxiliary faces and develop the UCSs. We've got this edge here, or this face, that we could use as reference for the auxiliary face one. And then we have uh, this edge down here that we can use for auxiliary phase two. Now in addition, I would consider inputting or placing on a separate layer, if you wish, the center reference line here. Because what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to use the endpoints of the center reference line in this view, okay, once we start to produce the presentation so that we can project the auxiliary view, right? And as well, we'll want to put in a center line here so we could use it similarly in this view as we're projecting our auxiliary view here. Secondly, we'll want to create a, another reference line for the section or the cutting plane line here and then the cutting plane line here as well. So let's take a look at that. All right, here we are. I'm going to switch back just to one viewport. Okay. And if we start first with our uh, UCSs, let's orbit around. Okay. I'm going to make this the origin, this the direction of X, and then this the direction of Y. So let's reposition one more time. There we go. All right. We'll come back over here to view. We'll use three point UCS. Here's the origin. Along this edge is X, and along this face is Y. Now, immediately, once we've created that, let's go ahead and open up the UCS list. We'll call this Auxiliary 1. Click OK. All right, that's saved. And now we'll orbit to expose this face. And we'll do something similar here. Again, three point UCS. I'll use this as the origin. Along this edge is the X, and along this edge as Y. Return to the UCS list and change that to auxiliary 2. Okay, so now that we have the UCSs, now we can take a look at creating those reference lines. So, first, I can switch back to my auxiliary 1 face. Okay, and let's say we're going to try to find the cutting plane line reference here and, and also the center line reference here. So here's what I could do, starting with a construction line, for example, and then I could trim it later. Let's make a vertical construction line, which now I can put here at the origin and simply using offset, right, uh, of radius 125. So if I use offset 1.250, from left to right, that's our center. Now, again, if I use construction line, this time horizontal, place it here at the origin, and then to locate the cutting plane line here, I'll offset two inches to, to go along this face. Okay? Now, in order to be able to snap to these, I need to break these lines. Okay? So I can just use the break command some distance away, just break the line and get rid of the excess. Get close, but oops. Let's undo that. Let's get close, but not too close there. Okay, and get rid of the excess. That way, as we orbit or take a look in our uh, standard views, right, we'll be able to, be able to see those endpoints, and they'll be accurate reference lines to produce uh, good auxiliary and section views. So similarly over here, it's going to break this line here and get rid of the excess. All right? So we'll do the same thing to the other face here, but this time I'll switch. So we'll go to auxiliary 2 construction line, make vertical construction line, start at that origin, and then let's do our horizontal one also at the origin, and then we can use offset one more time. And our offset is going to be the same from left to right. We have uh, 1.250 
from left to right. And then, uh, let's see, we had a dimension of 250, so I guess we can do one to locate the cutting plane line. So if I offset from the bottom up by one, that should be the reference line for the section in that view. And then once again, let's position ourselves so we can break these lines. So I'll break and then down here, just break some distance away and get rid of the excess. Yep. Let's try that again. We'll break here and then move away so you don't get that snap mode. And then let's get rid of the excess. Okay, so there you go. We've got our all our reference lines right there. And if it helps to uh, to change the color, you can see here. Actually, I snapped and I and I lost part of my line here. Let's see if I could just pull it up, keep it uh, polar there. There we go. Just re-extend that. And if it helps, let's go ahead and select those lines and just give it a different color while we work so that it's less confusing. So here, uh, or we'll just put it on a different layer for now. There we go. Okay, so there's our reference lines. Now the next step, we'll go ahead and start producing the features in the auxiliary one face and then followed by the auxiliary two face. So if we start with the auxiliary face one and we take a look at our uh, profile here for the slot. Okay, let's switch UCSs here. Let's go back to the auxiliary face one. Okay, and again, we can use some construction lines just to lay out some of our geometry. So if I start here at the back corner and if I offset uh, 0 0.250, offset from the back going up. Then I establish another vertical construction line here. Let's do construction line and V for vertical. Now we'll start over here at this edge. And then we offset the 0.437. Okay, from right to left. Now we have something that we could work with here. Uh, basically, we, got, we, we can work with half the profile, right? And as I start drawing, let's say with line or polyline, all right, if I start here, what I'm going to be doing here is tracking the, uh, we got uh, 90 here, we're going to go 30 degrees this direction at, uh, what is it, 210 or 120, okay, and then we'll track along that offset line to our intersection here. And if we just leave it open, or actually, it doesn't matter. Actually, if, if we leave it open right here, okay, now I can just mirror that line. So if I take mirror and then use that reference line there, now we should have it on both sides, okay. And then we'll just join it with one more line here. And then we could close it all uh, by making a region. I know it's kind of hard to see that. I think now we can actually move the model into the correct layer. Let's put it into the 3D layer there. And now you can see that open profile. OK. So if I use boundary this time, and select our open edges here. And the last line here. Okay, there's our region. And now what we want to do is we're going to extrude. 
So we're going to make sure we zoom in so we can select that face, that region. And then once again, we can use our uh, vertices, our vertex points on the object to finish the extrusion here. We can even go beyond the object, right? As long as we penetrate the surface, it's the key. You don't want to be too short. And then we can go ahead and use subtract. So subtract from the larger object, enter. Select the smaller object, enter. And there's our slot. Now we can use the same approach. However, this time for the slot that goes into the auxiliary face one, we can switch over to auxiliary face two. We'll be drawing in this face right here. And if we take a look at our sample drawing, you can see here we've got a, a 0 0.250 depth. And if we measure the opening, it's 0.875. Now, as a rectangular shape here, okay, uh, we can do this in a variety of ways. We, we can actually uh, go ahead and make our construction lines if we like to or we could even just draft our rectangle here at 0.875 comma 0.250 okay and then uh, we can just use some construction lines to position it so if I use horizontal here I can snap to that and move from the center or the midpoint here to that intersection. So because we're in the same UCS, you can see as we orbit around here, it's perfectly aligned. Now what we'll be able to do is once again, using extrude, we can select that profile, extrude all the way through the object. And this is how we produce that little a jagged edge that you see in the front in the front view is what's happening here with the leftover geometry so if you go ahead and use subtract once again from the larger object you're going to su subtract the smaller object and now you can see here the results All right now as we proceed, we can continue to shift back and forth. There's no special order here that you need to take, but you do need to include the counter bore in auxiliary face one, and you need the two holes in the auxiliary face two. So let's just continue with auxiliary face two since that's the UCS we're sharing right now. If we take a look at the drawing there, you're gonna see we have two radius holes of 250 separated by one uh, 125 there. So I can just start with my circle, start at my intersection. We'll make this radius of 0 0.250. Now I can just simply copy UCP, copy, polar, uh, right along that axis. And this is going to be at 1.125. And then once again, uh, we can extrude both circles. Make sure we go through the object, but not into the other features. Okay, you can orbit around to check that. We'll use subtract from the larger object, selecting both of these cylinders to produce the holes. Next, we'll go to auxiliary face one. Again, switching our UCS. Take a look at your sketch here. You can see we have the counter bore at diameter 1250 at a depth of 0.375. Let's do that one first. So again, we're in the correct UCS, starting with the circle command. We'll snap here to our construction lines. So you can see, we've already got some features built in. If you don't have these reference lines, it's gonna be really difficult to align these features as you continue to add. We have a diameter here of 1.250. Okay, and we're going to extrude this. Now notice here, notice the direction of Z, right? It's pointing away. So we're going to need to use a negative 0.375 extrusion to make it go inside. Okay, opposite 
the, dir the positive direction of that z-axis. Now, at this time, we could also create the concentric uh, hole through, and we'll make that radius or that diameter 0 0.750. Okay, but I'll hold down on the extrusion because what I'll want to do first is create the counter bore. So first, subtracting from the main object here, enter, subtracting the counter bore cylinder. Now, using extrude and extruding, once again, through the object, making sure we don't go through the other features. Okay. Extrude it through the object and then subtract it. From the larger object, enter, subtract the smaller cylinder. And there we go. We've got our hole through. At this point, I really like our model, and so what I'll do here is get rid of the other information, return to the world UCS, and now we could finish off with the details.